Hi everybody, this is Deborah with Preservation Publications coming to you through Preservation 2012 at YouTube. I want to thank you for the warm welcome you all gave me um, for my first two videos that I posted yesterday. Some wonderful comments and some support from the community that I really didn't expect. So I'd like to thank you for that. I told you um, in my last video that I do believe in peak oil. I guess the optimum word in all that is belief. Uh, I don't know it to be a fact. I don't know it to be absolute. But it is what I believe. It's what the evidence of the world is, is showing to be true to me. But it is a theory, and theories are never um, foolproof. If you don't ascribe to a peak oil, that's good. That's fine. Just understand what's going on in the world. I'll understand what's going on in the world. Let's put our heads together and see if we can find a way out together. Whether we believe in peak oil or not, there are certain things that are happening around the globe that should have us all sitting up and taking notice. It would appear that the world, that the earth, has reached peak population, has reached peak food production, has peak reached peak water production. It seems like a lot of people are doing without. Some say it's a matter of um, poor uh, distribution of, of natural resources, and some say because of um, climate change and um, peak oil, effects of peak oil, all of these things are being capped. They are, they've reached their limit. They're not going any higher. Uh, in fact, they're going to start dropping off in some pretty sad and dramatic ways. Starvation around the world is not a pretty thing. But here in the United States, we are so far removed from it. Even our poor eat pretty well in this um, country. Poor around the world, on the other hand, don't have the luxury of living in wealth, which is what we in the United States do. We live in wealth. We are living on piles of things, piles of stuff. And we haven't even begun to touch everything that's available in the United States as far as goods go. We're going to start feeling the effects of of food shortages that's already happening now. Give you a couple of examples. Kellogg's has uh, given notice that they're not going to be able to keep up with the demand for certain products that they that they offer. I think one that had to do with like egos or something. Aside like that. from Kellogg's, packaging has shrunk. the um, The amount of food offered in any unit has been reduced, and prices have increased. We've seen this go on. Um, quite deceptively and quite effectively, actually for a couple of years now. What filled a grocery cart a year ago will only fill that same cart by about two-thirds today. And it's happening. It's happening. And none of this is a surprise to any of us. Anybody that has to walk into a grocery store and buy food for their family knows what's happening. We're all aware of it. And so far we've complained and we've griped and we've you know brought it to the attention of a few folks, but we're still we're still surviving it. The reduction isn't that great. We're paying twice as much because we can pay twice as much. But that's going to come to an end pretty quickly here when food foodstuffs just aren't available. I learned recently that a third of the um, corn crop in this country is is used to produce alternative sources of energy. Sixty percent of Iowa's corn crop is used to produce alternative sources of energy. That will either cut back on what we have to eat in this country or it's going to cut back on nations that are dependent upon our grains. And it'll probably do both. It is doing both actually if you think about it. How do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? Are we going to wait until there's nothing on the shelves? Are we going to wait till there's just nothing available? Are we going to get out there and plant what we can plant, grow what we can grow, and try to support ourselves just a little bit, become just a little bit self-reliant in that area? In my last video, I told everybody that they should go down and, and order their family supply of heirloom seeds. That's still true. That needs to happen. But when you think about what you can 
plant in your yards, in and around your home, and what you can provide for your family, there's a couple of things that you're going to run short of, that you won't be able to produce enough of. And these are things that you could probably um, stock up on, probably would be a good idea, until it plays out how these staples will be made available to us. The first thing that you need to think about are fats. And I'm talking about animal fats. I'm talking about vegetable fats. Where do they come from? How do you grow them? One of the sources is, that's available to us that grow in our backyard are peanuts. But you know what? In New England, you're not going to get peanuts. You need a very long, very hot growing season to produce them. And what you get from a single peanut plant isn't enough to make much of a difference. If you've got a huge piece of property and you have um, uh, lots of space and lots of water and lots of energy to put in on, on your garden, plant peanuts. Another source of oil is corn, but it's pretty impractical to grow in a backyard. It's kind of quaint to have your one or two or three or four um, stalks growing and it's quite lovely actually. But you have 50, even if you had 50 stalks of corn growing in your backyard, most you'll get 75 ears of corn. That wouldn't do anybody, that wouldn't even benefit one person for one year. Wouldn't take care of one person for one year for either their grain intake needs or for their vegetable oil needs. You can also um, plant sunflowers which is which will produce um, oil as you well know eat sunflower seeds and there's a lot of oil in them um, and they are beneficial as wind breaks be set up between uh, garden sections and so forth. You can stick them in little corners, sunlit corners of your yard and so forth out of the way and they're attractive to look at and you can get some some oil from it but it's not going to be enough uh, to provide you what you need. You can plant an almond tree but that's fairly inefficient as well because of the amount of food that is, amount of almonds that you can um, harvest from a single tree. Avocado trees are great if you are in the heat and if you've got the space because they are very, very rich in um, oil, very good for you, healthy, and it's not difficult to extract the oil from avocado to use in cookies. And so in some places you can grow bananas and bananas have a lot of oil in them too, which is probably one good reason why we give it to our children because of the... the uh, natural oils in it. Um, olives can be grown too but not quite as successfully. It takes a long time for them to produce and unless you are just dead set on on olives probably not a good choice. So think about where you're going to get your oils. You're not going to get them from your garden. For the most part you're just not. You might be able to get a taste of it but you're not going to get it all that you need. So these are things that you probably want to stock up on. Go grocery shopping, buy uh, two uh, containers of uh, vegetable oil instead of one. You're going to need it.